So, not a lot of people know that. Some little things about Dialog APL. So far this week, most of my colleagues have talked about big, wonderful, fancy things that are coming along. I look after the support department, so I'm the person who looks backwards all the time, so I worry about what goes on in version 11 and 12, not necessarily what goes on in version 14 or 14.1. And also, I'm more interested, perhaps, in some of the little things that we can do with Dialog APL to make your use of Dialog APL more fun, more efficient, more enjoyable. So, not a lot of people know that. It was, of course, said by Michael Caine. Well, actually, he didn't say that. Apparently, Peter Sellers put it on his answer phone on one occasion, and Michael Caine has, for the rest of his life, been fed up with saying to have say to people, I never said that. I speak too quickly. I also am fairly incomprehensible. This is the first time, it was a long time, that we've had a conference in England, so I thought I'd explain or mention the fact that that is how sometimes we speak around here. He got in his jam jar and went down the frog while rabbiting to his trouble on the dog. If I go off into interesting conversations, please do tell me. Quick extra slide I've put in here um, from, from things that have happened this week. This is the first conference, and I am the last dialogue in person to speak, so it has got to survive for another 25 minutes, and my uh, reputation is to break things. But this is the first time we've had no unplanned interpreter crashes during presentations at a dialogue conference. <laughs> there is another 25 minutes of me, and I don't know what Ziggy's up to, but please, Ziggy, don't ruin it. We have started to sign... Um, some of the executables that we released. The Windows Setup.exe is now signed, um, and we propose to sign uh, things like the patch MSI files for the .NET bridge and the such like. Okay. Small beer at the moment. We're starting the small things. We want to get to the point where we sign more and more things going forwards. Okay. Let us know what you think about it. A lot of what I'm going to talk about today, I would ask, please, can we have feedback? Not necessarily now, but feedback on what we're doing. Um, Bjorn mentioned... Um, in his session on cryptography, uh, being able to write encrypted records to component files. I suspect, Bjorn, you're using one of those two I-beams. New in 14.0, I'm not going to say any more, other than there is an option to compress um, and decompress vectors of short integers, and it is possible to serialize and deserialize de arrays. That effectively is to take an APL object and have it given to you as a vector a binary blob, you can't do much with it other than write it to a file, compress it or whatever, but it's there. And uh, Nick spoke about the compiler. The compiler documentation and also the futures and isolates is not considered part of the standard documentation of 14.0. It's called experimental features um, and all the documentation to do with appears in two separate manuals which are included in the 14.0 help directory and is also on docs.dialog.com for anyone else to download. docs.dialog.com and help.dialog.com are now updated from time to time, so it's always worth popping to those two things to see what the latest documentation is. Here's the summary. I'm going to have to struggle to get through this stuff. I don't expect people to understand or take too much time to understand necessarily what I'm doing. It's more to give you an idea to have a look at later. So, let's start. I think the best way of doing Windows captions is to give a, a quick demonstration. What we've So here is a dialog APL session. So up the top here, here is the caption of the session window and it has the name of the workspace and the name of the product in it. We've been asked for some time if we could allow people to, first of all, on the fly, change those titles, and second, and to change those titles. And what we've done is a, a kind of halfway house to start with. And what we're allowing you to do is to specify the captions of Windows using a mixture of keywords and... Um, and your own text. So what I've said here is I'm going to define um, for my session, my status, my exit dialogues, I'm going to specify a caption that will have the process ID 14.0. whatever it was, 22520 at the moment, 64 Unicode 
name of my workspace and the short version of the um, namespace ID. But for my editor, explorer, and find replace windows, I want to have the process ID 14.0. That's it. The workspace name and the short namespace name. And for all other windows, whatever dialog has as the default. Whether these are particularly sensible or not is another question. I thoroughly recommend setting the process ID as part of your caption because it's the one piece of information that allows you to, to identify all of the interpreter related windows that refer to a single process. So if I run set captions, set captions, what we see in the registry, I hope, you refresh here is there now a, a key in the registry called captions. And they're all um, register strings, and I've defined, was that six of them? There is no tool as yet to allow you to define this stuff. As you see, I used a function that uh, I think Kai wrote many years ago, and I found buried in the depths of salt, the salt code. Um, I suspect. Um, if I ask Dan nicely enough, I might ask him to write a user command to do this at some point to allow us to set these things. Okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> so having done that, I come out of APL. Minimize that. And now when I go back into APL, you can see that my session caption now has process ID 14.022502, 64 Unicode, and it's a clear workspace. So, and if I start an edit window, actually no, if I start an edit window in a namespace that I know I have created, enter. in a namespace that I have already created in a workspace that I have loaded. You can see that the two captions are different in the process ID and the full version number, whereas in this case I had the process ID and the short version number. So I um, hope that's useful. The other thing that sometimes happens is that you can, um, <clears throat> that the caption isn't necessarily always flushed when you run your code. So in this particular case, I have a function, and what it's going to do is create a form, set the workspace to be something different than what it is at the moment, at the moment it's D14, and then um, issue a quad DQ on the form. And if I run that in this form, here is the form. My workspace ID is now hello1, but the caption still shows the original uh, workspace ID. The caption hasn't been flushed. And we've had a number of people say, it would be really nice if we could have the caption updated. And, right, sorry, yes, if I do this, then what you can see is in this case, um, the workspace ID has been updated to hello1, and so has the caption, okay? And that is because I have called this new iBeam, 2022 iBeam. You do have to have version 14.0 with an SVN revision of 22.176 onwards. It was added after we released 14.0. Um, so you would need to have the uh, uh, DSS patch to your interpreter. We remade the 14.0 um, installation images three, four weeks ago, and that will have this in it. Kai. Andy, what happens if you press F1 on the iBeam? Uh, you get the um, the um, if you hit F1 on iBeam, you get the help system coming up describing all the iBeam features. You mean has the documentation been updated to refer to this? It has indeed. If you and this is this is this is <laughs> so this is the point. If you have the latest installation images, it will have the latest documentation with it. If you have installed version, the first release of 14.0, you will have to download the documentation from the documentation webpage. We have now 
we are now creating a, a zip file with every single one of the, the, the PDFs in it so that if you want to update your documentation, you can bring it down as a single PDF and put it into the help thing. And partly because I am more of a Unix bigot than a Windows bigot, I frequently use help.dialog.com and that is always, that is updated at the same time we update docs.dialog.com. So F1 is an invaluable thing to learn to use in a Windows interpreter to bring up the help system, but help.dialog.com uh, is a pretty useful state and that is, you can always assume that has the latest documentation that we have released. <coughs> Can I just remind you, this forces the captions of all your windows to be updated. It does not change the caption text. Okay? So the only way you can change the caption text is to define the entries in the registry, and they are only picked up when you start the interpreter. So um, very briefly, I mentioned the process idea is very useful. If you're a Unix user, uh, that is the quickest, simplest way to get the process ID of my current process. Um, and you can do things, obviously, like use Quad SH to get a listing of all the processes running on the box. If you're on Windows, you have to use a Quad NA call to get your current process ID. But again, you may find that if you want to uh, just see what processes are running on my, my Windows box, then you can always just get away with a Quad CMD task list. Um, in our QAs, I use that to make sure that Word isn't running or, or other processes aren't running before the QA that deals with Word runs to make sure that I'm starting in a clean environment. <laughs> and to make sure that when we've finished, then Word is no longer running because the QAs are meant to close down Word. So it's quite a useful thing. It is better to use Quad NA on all platforms rather than to use Quad SH or Quad CMD. However, it is an awful lot more difficult to write code supporting Quad NA. And trying to write a Quad NA, a cover function for Quad NA to allow us to get the process ID on all Windows platforms, on Windows and all Unix platforms, I can't work out how to write a piece of code that looks elegant, um, so we haven't done it yet. So, a bit about the trace from the editor. The moving finger writes, and having writ moves on. Not all thy piety nor wit shall lure back to cancel half a line, nor all thy tears wash a word of it from the rubaiyat of Obakayam. Well, life isn't that bad in Dialog APL. The delete backspace and the back key does a pretty good job of allowing you to undo changes you have made. So, to get into the editor, you have seen a number of presenters start um, the editor by using paren ed, and then I'll just call it a function. It obviously applies to scripts and variables. You can type quad ed, quote, foo, quote, and that can be run under program control as well. You can give a, a number of names to paren ed to open up multiple windows. Um, in this particular case, that will, let's assume none of these items exist. That will open a function edit window, a script edit window. That isn't a valid name, so it is ignored. And that, that will open another function window. So paren ed, quad ed, ignore bad names silently. However, there are many other ways of getting the editor going. And I find it, I find it surprising to find how few people know about this. This suggests we've not done a very good job of making that clear. If you type foo and you hit the command ed, it will open an edit window. So you can type foo and double click on it under Windows and under the ride. If you're on Windows using the native uh, Windows IDE or you're using putty or ride, you can hit shift enter to open the edit window. If you're on Linux, it's the APL key and enter. And in Windows and ride, you can also get, get to open the editor using menu, op menu options. That works whether you are in the session, whether you are in an edit window, or whether you're in a trace window. So it's one of those tools to productivity that I clearly think we haven't done enough to advertise because I see so many people always just type paren ed, function name, come out the editor and go and enter another one. And the whole purpose of the ID is to allow you to open one edit window and move on to another function, move on to another variable, so on and so forth. If you have a suspended function, if you hit the edit command while on white space in the session, it will actually open that suspended function in the editor. Similarly, if you hit the trace command, and that's either contr that is control enter or APL shift enter on Linux, um, that opens um, the session 
So that opens the tracer on the most recently suspended function. So if you just run your code and you get a syntax error or whatever, naked trace, and it will bring the suspended function up in the tracer window. If you have set it up to ask for multiple trace windows, you'll get all of the trace windows as a stack. At the moment, that's limited, I think, to about 48 items on the stack. Kai, I know you sometimes hit that as a limit. You mentioned it to me, so, but I, other people have as well. If you find that as a limitation, let us know, because we possibly could increase that limit. And the other one, I mentioned this last year. This is the niftiest little thing that John and I had a chat one Friday afternoon and said, wouldn't it be a good idea if we could do this? If you're in the tracer um, in 13.2, if you want to open the function you are tracing in the edit window, you have to have the cursor on the f in the first column of the line and then you hit edit. Ooh. Now you can be on any white space in the trace window. A couple of features we put in 14.0, partly to get glean comment from people. We have an option that allows you to align comments. It only works in simple functions at present. Uh, there is a keystroke you can define to do that. There is obviously a thought, well, should it work in scripted objects? What happens when you've got a two and a half thousand line scripted object? Do you want us to have a function that says, I am here, click on the line comment, and it aligns comment throughout the entire script? Do you want it to be on a selected object, on selected text? Please feedback on that one, okay? It's a, it's a, have an experiment with it, see what you think of it, give us some feedback on what you would like. Okay. We have also added select all. We kind of snuck this one in the project product. We sometimes we find it much more fun to let you guys find out these things we've done rather than tell you about them. But uh, uh, there is a keystroke that allows you to select all the text in the current object. Um, we will be adding it to the context menu in Windows at some point. Um, I hope it's of use. <clears throat> Another thing, give me a moment, Kai. I know you used to add comments to this. We have added it so you can now uh, select to skip blank lines and comments when you're tracing. Um, you always stop on the first line of any function, even if it is a comment. And the reason for that is because if you have a large number of comments at the top of your function, you really want to be able to see the function header to know what function you've gone into. If you are in a tradfun, it will also stop if the last line is a comment. So it skips blank lines and comments at the moment. Again, feedback please. Would you rather that was split into two options? Right, another quick demo. One of the little annoyances that particularly Unix users have is that, well, it's an annoyance that every user, all users have, but Unix users have nothing to do about it, can do nothing about it, is that you cannot save a workspace if there are open or uh, edit or trace windows. So here is, he says hopefully, a dialog APL 14.0 Unicode running on a Linux partition. And if we have a look at the function foo, so am I tracing, I'm tracing, it, it's only going to call foo, calls goo, calls who. So I run that function and my code has fallen over. What's going on, says Andy? Shift, Windows key shift enter to bring up the stack of trace windows. I'm doing this demonstration in Linux because it's the smallest way I can get three trace windows up on the smallest amount of real estate on the screen. And if I jump to the session, type print save, Ooh. I know it's an irritating message. It really annoys me as well. So what you do is you then mutter a bit about dialogue and how unhelpful they can be. And you then go and you start clearing the stack of windows. And I can now type print save. Wonderful. Unfortunately, in doing that, we've also cleared the stack, which can be somewhat unhelpful. So what you can now do is open your trace windows, probably got some edit windows as well. I like to save that. So, next J, two, two, oh, two, three, windows, one. Okay, that has closed my trace windows, but my SI stack is still there, and I can do a print save. So, we've implemented that on all platforms. Okay, again, something we've put into the product after we release 14.0, so you do need to have an updated uh, interpreter. 
this does get to a bit of a list of things we've done, but that's the problem when I'm talking about small things. I have to get a lot of them in the, in the presentation. I believe this started with a conversation with Dick Bowman a while ago, and he said, what I'd love to be able to do is to run my, develop my application. I've got stops and I've got monitors all over the place, but be absolutely certain that by the time the workspace has been bundled up and sent to my uh, end users, there are no stop bits, monitor bits in the in the code that they receive. So, what we've done is added iBeam, 20, sorry, 2400 iBeam, and what that does is it clears all the stop, trace, and monitor bits in your workspace and then saves the workspace. Okay? That was the easy and quick way of implementing this, and we think it is really valuable for those who want this feature. If people would like us to do something along the lines of saying, preserve the stop, monitor, and trace bits in the workspace right the workspace out with those unset, but preserve it in this current process, uh, let us know and we can have a think about it. But this is the quick way of doing it. It clears everything. Right. Um, very quickly on this one, um, if you have a scripted object, you can only change the source of a scripted object using QuadFX or by using the editor. If you create a class or a namespace and then uh, create a function in it using quadfx, it doesn't change the source of the namespace. It doesn't change the source of the scripted object. That is the way Dialogues APL has had this done since this uh, scripted objects were put in the product. However, what we do have in 14.0 is at least that if you fix a function of the same name in a scripted object, as a function that was in the scripted object, when you trace and edit it, you now see that quad FX version and not the version that's in the source of the script, um, which makes life a little less confusing. Some keystrokes in Windows. So, Alt F and one of the numbers in the most recently used list. Does everyone use that to print to load workspaces? Yep. Alt F Shift Num or the mouse click on the number that. X loads the workspace, and who uses that one? Which is Alt F and then Control and mouse click on the workspace name, and it loads the workspace and opens the tracer on the first line of the function in the latent expression. Searching very quickly. The search tool in the editor now can have sensitive, case sensitive or case insensitive searching uh, for you to choose. <clears throat> Given the fact that the find tool also has case insensitive or case sensitive searching, uh, the flag to say which one you have chosen is the same flag for both search tools. And when you search for text, the text you put in the find object appears in the edit search thing and vice versa. Carlo. You have two ways to search. You can search a string or you can search a, a, a complete word. Also, this can be set for the can't do that in the editor yet, but at least we have made it so that the, the editor is the same It's the same search thing as it's always been, other than it now does case-sensitive or case-insensitive searching. Um, okay, I'm running out of time, so very quickly. Um, if you want to uh, define events, um, you can use this form of syntax originally. You can now use this syntax, at which point the callback, the argument to the callback, the first item is a reference to the name where the callback refers to. Um, if you wanted to have user-defined events, you had to use this syntax, so you always got back the name of the object. And if that is a reference itself, hash dot open square bracket form close square bracket is not the most useful thing to identify where the reference is pointing to. So now um, we've added uh, the ability to use this style of syntax on and then an event number. And if you use this form to define the event, the callback returns the callback returns a uh, reference to the name it's on. Michael Caine, you're only meant to blow the bloody doors off as his colleague destroys a van rather than blows the back doors of it off. In the original and only worthwhile watching Italian job. If you have a classic interpreter and you load a Unicode, attempt to load a Unicode workspace into it, you are likely to get a translation error. There you go. You can sort out what on earth the translation error and where it is. Not anymore. We now thought, wouldn't it be a good idea? We'll tell you which character it is that generates the error. 
Okay. It still doesn't help too much, but at least you now know that it's quad UCS 9016. We can't put the character out because it's not in the classic quad AVU. That's the key character. Don't forget, it might only be the first of dozens of characters who've got this problem. Key and rank are prime um, candidates for having problems. Microsoft Smart Quotes and Smart, smart Dashes are the ones that I have to deal with most frequently. Um, and so I would then just I would cut and paste that expression into a Unicode session, take the character, and put it in the fine tool in the Unicode interpreter. Here's another one of our masterpieces. That is an invalid property. So we tell you that the size property is wrong. I may get this wrong. I didn't get to bed terribly early last night, and this takes a lot of explaining. That is invalid. That is the previous property that is good. So look at the property list, find the next item in the property list, and use that as the name we tell you where it's gone wrong. 14.0. There is an error at position 2 of the right argument. I hope that is more easy to find the way what's going on there. Yeah, well, let's start with an argument. Index origin 0, 1. Is that a property or not? Well, it is, but most people think it's the type. Of the, it's the type, but most people don't necessarily assume that to be a property. So, two seem like index origin zero seem like a good idea here. Okay, so I've gone through some of the features of 14.0. It's really worth reading the release notes. Now that we have Fiona with us, she doesn't have to get away with so much these days. It's all documented. Let us know what you don't like in dialogue. The big features are pass on to the development team. Small things like about the ID and the such like, let us know. How can we make life better? And that is all I have to say. <clears throat>